Direct from Hollywood with Ryan Seacrest. NBC's hit crime thriller, The Blacklist, starring James Spader, ended season one with everybody wondering if his character, the criminal mastermind Red, is secretly the father of FBI agent Lizzie Keene. But James doesn't want fans uh, to assume too much. He tells the website bio, it may be the obvious result is the right one, even if it's predictable. It'd be satisfying for fans because the journey was satisfying. But given our show, nothing is as simple as it may appear. That's from James Spader. Season two of The Blacklist is on NBC Tonight. That's direct from Hollywood. Powered by... NBC. Tonight on NBC, it's the season premiere of the most talked about show on TV, The Blacklist. It's Must See Monday tonight on NBC. Watch it live. NBC's The Blacklist is on tonight. Mm -hmm. And James Spader's on the other line. NBC's number one boy. NBC's The Blacklist Mm -hmm. returns. All right, hang on. Wait, can you hang on, Maddie, for one second? Because uh, James yes, Spader's got to oh, get okay. ready to shoot. Are you going to sing in front of him? I wonder if he's a singer. I don't know. Yeah, he, he, he's a performer. He, yeah. he does it all. He does stage. James, yeah. are, you're, you're a good singer, right? I can't sing a note, Ryan. Oh, well, God, what a great speaker, though. Uh, yeah, your look at that, that voice. Your books on tape are good, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, welcome back. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. We are very excited about the return of the blacklist uh you know we were talking earlier about it just and for those who've seen the show you can actually catch up on the show but of those who have seen the show just to talk about some storyline here and i know that you're 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 coy about it but we know you're the father um (laughs) well we don't know for a fact if not why are you burned all over your back (laughs) you're gonna have to wait and see ah don't i can i can Uh, because there was a flashback, right? Lizzie's house was burned down as a kid, and Lizzie was always told that her father died mm-hmm. in the fire. Right. But now we think that Red is the father because he has all those burns on his back. Right. So, okay, what can, what can you? What's your reaction, Mister Spader? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very, it's always so difficult for me to be able to talk about our show, except in the most oblique terms. <laughs> and uh, you know, there this season though it, is the. I mean, starting tonight, they. You know, certain revelations about the past just hit the show immediately. First episode. Um, and But, you know, as it is in our show, any revelation ends up uh, <clears throat> just serving to pose more questions. Where is Tom? We thought he was dead. Now he's back. That remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> that we're going to get an answer. So did you uh, did you ever think that that after playing Alan on Boston Legal, did you think that that you'd find I mean that was such a, a strong character and such a well-done series. Did you think that you would find another role in such a well-done series this quickly or immediately after? Uh well, it wasn't immediately after. I mean, I um and and that speaks to that question in that in that it really um I had no sense of what the greater world of television was out there. I really, Boston Legal, I saw because I made the show, and therefore I would watch the episodes. Um, but I really, I've never been a great TV watcher, and especially when you're making a television show, there isn't much time for any of it, so anything else besides that, you know. Um, so I didn't really know what the landscape was like out there in terms of further television work. And I finished Boston Legal and left Los Angeles and came to New York and did a play for a year, uh, which was the perfect antidote to doing, you know, a bunch of years on a TV show. And then, uh, and but all the time, reading possibilities for the next thing, whether it be film or television or whatever. And uh, I realized at that point, when I started to sort of comb through material, that the search for something that I really wanted to commit to for a period mm-hmm. of time was going to be difficult. So the play, uh, after I finished the race, doing race on Broadway, the, the I went back, and, and in the interim, I, I did a year on The Office, uh, mm-hmm. which was just great fun. It was really a fun um, – it was just fantastic. It was a great year of doing that. And, and interrupted in the middle of it, and part of the reason why – it it worked out was that right at the time when I'd been offered the office, I was offered to do um, Steven Spielberg's Lincoln film. Mm -hmm. And 
And so that was a fantastic year doing that. But, uh, you know, and again, during that year, I also was reading other materials out there. But um, And, you know, when you're looking for a television show that you may be conceivably committing to for years to come, um, I'm careful that it's going to be something that can sustain and that's mm-hmm. something that I'm going to still be excited doing in four years as I am doing in the first year. And uh, I, after, you know, reading a lot, I realized how difficult it was going to be to find something that was, for me, as satisfying as as doing, as playing Alan Shore was. Uh, and then, lo and behold, uh, I found it. And it's back tonight, mm-hmm. The Blacklist. It's uh, ten nine Central on NBC. Uh, it, did I read somewhere that you used to, back in the day before all of this began, you used to deliver groceries? I did. That was actually that was actually funny you mentioned that. That was actually my first, uh, you know, um, uh, what's it called? A, a job where you have to fill out a W two or no? Or, or, oh yeah, or, like or whatever it is where you have to fill out where you have to pay taxes. Yeah. yeah. First we'll job I had. I had yeah. I had jobs prior to that because I started working you know odd jobs when I was like twelve or thirteen or something. But um, but those were you know. Shoveling sand and taking care of people's yards and oh, you know, sure, that sort yeah. of thing. stuff you didn't um, report. Yeah, yeah, stuff you didn't report and things that you were basically your neighbors were doing you a favor by hiring you and you know keeping you off the street. But I, um, but that was my very first job that I had. Uh, so I guess that would have been either when I was fifteen or sixteen. I don't know what the legal ages for you know the first time you're going to have a job yeah. such well, as that the reason but, the re- reason uh, i bring it up yeah, would have been it would have been 16 because i had my license because i was delivering groceries i, I bring um, it up because we we have talked to uh various folks on this show who uh, who go to people's homes to do a service or their apartments to do a service and you'd be blown away you'd be amazed at the volume of people who have been invited into the beds of homeowners and, um, and oh my gosh, and, I gotta tell you, if I knew then what I know now, I would have had, <laughs> it would have been it would that summer would have been much more entertaining. Than it was. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of people that answered the lovely, you know, at the time they were older women, but now I look back and realize that they were in their prime, <laughs> and, you know, and, and they and answered. The I door. Can tell you how many of them answered the door at like three o'clock in the afternoon or whatever in their you know nightgown or bathrobe or you know whatever it was, and and I was just an idiot, I guess. No, you just you, just, you, you weren't informed at that age. Right. You had to be informed as you go along. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for uh, for calling us, uh, James Spader here. The Blacklist tonight, ten nine seven. NBC. You said that you're not a singer, but I did find this. I feel the thunder. Does that That's ring a bell? That's a good singing voice. Is that, from, uh, is that from Tough Turf? That's Tough Turf, 1985. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you something funny about that. Is I, uh, when I did that film, uh, I told them, you know, I really am not much of a singer. I mean, I really am not. Um, historically terrible. And... Um, they said, well, you know what, what we'll do is, is, and I wanted to be, so they said, what we'll do is, is when we actually shoot the scene where the song is done, we'll have somebody who has sung the song and you can lip sync with it. And cause I had to sort of do a lot in the scene, um, <clears throat> had to be playing the piano and sort of, you know, moving around and doing this and that. And so they said, you know, we can have someone, um, that you can lip sync to. And then we can go in afterwards into this, into a sound studio and, and you can record it and so on and so forth. And I said, okay, I mean, we can give it a shot, but I'm telling you, you better have, you better have somebody waiting outside in the waiting area to come right in and record. Cause I really, it's going to be awful. And so sure enough, we went and so we shot the film and then we, I went into a sound studio and sure enough, it was horrendous. And they, every, I finished, I finished the first take and they all turned to me and said, said, okay, so let's bring in the guy that's waiting on the couch. <laughs> um, anyway, so they, they did, and when the film came out, uh, there was this guy I was working with as a, you know, sort of manager, sort of representative at the time, and, and he got some call from somebody at some record something, 
uh, that I'm sure doesn't exist today. But anyway, he called him up and he said, you know, hey, we just saw, you know, James <laughs> singing in this thing and we'd love to talk to you about and my representative. The first words out of his mouth were, well, is there an advance? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing full well that I would walk the gonna... door and it would be so horrendous. Oh, that's uh, anyway, so, well. so that is not me singing that as somebody else. Oh, my <laughs> My bubble will be burst. Um, hey, thanks for the time, man. Congratulations on a great series. All righty. Thank you very much. Take care, bud. Bye. Bye-bye. God, his voice is so It's really good, right? Safe. You know I he's feel like I'm voice safe. Ultron in Avengers. Oh, I know it all. Yeah. I didn't know that.